what's up guys it's covert code here and in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys the top five mistakes to avoid when making games on roblox so the first mistake you should avoid doing is thinking too big and it's all right to have an imagination and to think that you can achieve great things that's all well and good don't get me wrong but if you're just starting out okay you cannot try and make a massive game because that's going to be so discouraging to just make from start to finish it's just a massive project okay this also applies if you're working solo so if you know that um your idea needs more than one person working on it and you try to take it on by yourself you are less likely to finish making that game so I suggest just starting out from something simple like maybe a simulator game or even something smaller if you cannot make that yet. Um, but start small and then scale up from there so you can actually finish and release your games. The second mistake is not planning ahead, okay? So there are many tools out there such as Trello, Notion and all that um, which help you plan your games. Now most of the times you just get a good idea and you're like so excited to start working on that idea and you just forget to plan um that game and this has happened to me multiple times i just get this awesome idea and i just want to start working on it but if you do not plan ahead what you need to make will be unclear and that makes you more likely to give up and not actually push through with your game and it also lets you see uh, the vision of your game more clearly. So if you know that there needs to be a certain feature in your game or there needs to be a certain amount of content which you can't make yourself, for example, like uh, if you're a coder and you need someone to build your game or uh, create models for your game, you can actually plan ahead and realize that, hey, I can't do this by myself, so I need to get someone else on board. The third mistake is having confusing gameplay. So if you've ever just joined the game and had no idea what you're meant to be doing, that's exactly what I'm referring to. That will most likely cause you to leave the game instantly. And you don't want your players to leave instantly when they join, right? Obviously, um, you want them to just instantly join, know what they need to do and play for a long period of time. Now, unless your game is intuitive, um, for example, you've got a game like Phantom Forces or Arsenal, which is a first person shooter, then you need to fix that, obviously. So if your game isn't obvious, um, create a tutorial, for example, that can limit the confusion um, when someone joins. Because when you join a first person shooter like Arsenal, for example, you know what you need to do. You click play, uh, you get a gun, you shoot people and try to not die. That's literally something which mostly everyone knows. Um, when they play games like that. The fourth mistake which you might be making is not using free models, right? So there's a negative stigma around using free models and let me explain why you should use free models. So essentially free models are out there, um, you know, for people to use, obviously. They're there for a reason, right? So if, for example, you don't know how to make a house, the chances are that if you take a free modeled house and put that in your game, it's going to look much better than if you were to attempt to make uh, the house yourself and you have no idea how, you know? And, you know, this can help you actually achieve and stick to the, the goal of releasing your game. Because if there's something you don't know how to do and you try to do it and it turns out badly, then probably you're going to give up on your game and you want to limit that as much as possible. However, a word of warning when you use free models, most of them have, not most of them, but at least a good amount of them have um, either embedded scripts, which, um, you know, people call viruses. They're not actually viruses, but um, they slow down your game or, you know, they're just hidden scripts. So when you insert a free model into your game, just make sure that it's free of scripts unless um, it's, it's something which requires a script. And even then, um, I would still look at the scripts to make sure that, that they're not doing anything, uh, you know, mischievous. Now, the fifth and the biggest mistake which you should avoid doing is giving up. And this might seem obvious, right? So... It's it's obvious that you shouldn't give up on your game, but it's so hard to actually, you know, not give up on your game when you're actually trying to make it, especially if you're just starting out. And there might be multiple reasons why you should give up on a game, but I always suggest not giving up on a game because that game might very well succeed. And you never really know what's going to happen with a game unless you release it. And even if it doesn't succeed, right, that's not the end of the world. Um, that's a learning experience. So the next game that you release 
will hopefully succeed. And if not, then just repeat the process. And don't get stuck in analysis paralysis, um, which is essentially, you know, just looking at all the tiny details about your game and wondering, hey, uh, will the player like this? Will the player like that? Will this work? Will that work? Just do it. Nothing needs to be perfect. Nothing is actually perfect with any game. Um, but, you know, especially when you're just starting out, your game doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it out there and refine your game over time. So that's essentially all I had guys for this video. If you have any suggestions about what videos I should make in the future, then just leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys next time.